Welcome back to the Spinning Backfish Show. We are here with Johnny Eblen, an unbelievable fighter that's been on the show. Man, I think this is our fourth or fifth interview with you. I think you I think set so. the record, which is awesome. We are probably the biggest Johnny Eblen podcast out there. But thanks again for coming on prior to your big fight on October 19th um, against Fabian Edwards. Um Welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the show, Johnny. Yeah. Always uh, like interviewing with you guys. You guys are pretty chill. It's like shooting the shit with the boys. So yep. uh, anytime, <laughs> you guys wanna, anytime you guys want to interview me, I'm, I'm always down. That's awesome. So we were just talking a little bit before, but you told me you're heading out to Saudi, which, of course, is where the October 19th pay-per-view card is um, on next Tuesday. So that will allow you what? about 10 days or so to adjust. Will that be enough? Obviously you fought in Saudi earlier this year. Was, uh, did you have a similar time frame, time schedule, uh, before that fight? Yeah. So it was about 10 days the last time I went out and I felt like it was, it was su sufficient enough to kind of get acclimated. And, uh, I think it's a seven time, uh, seven hour time difference. And, uh, usually, you know, I, I like to, I like to go there a little bit early, like, Basically, it's an hour a day, so by seven days, I should be fine. And then even mm -hmm. though, like, I'm getting acclimated, I'm probably going to be fighting at, like, one in the morning. So it's, like, sometimes I, I feel like just going out the week of and just, like, not really paying too much attention to that type of stuff can be beneficial, too. But I felt pretty good in my last fight. Um, I just it – wasn't, it wasn't the fight I wanted, but, I mean, I learned from that fight. But uh, I felt pretty good going in, and I was getting pretty good sleep. And I think I think like ten days or maybe two weeks is a, a good amount of time to go out um, if you're going to go out to like Saudi Arabia or like the Middle East. I would say it's I would say big rematch. Obviously, a guy you already beat. The thing I wanted to ask there was obviously there was like a very like emotional fight. Big you had a big finish in the beginning of the round. There was like kind of some big like a little blow up with with his brother Leon. And him kind of after, is there any, like, residual from that at all? Or have you guys, like, have you talked to him really at all, like, either of them? or Nah. I mean, after the fight, um, after, like, it got heated, I remember I calmed down. I went over there and actually told Leon, I hope he w beats Colby. He beat Colby. And <laughs> then uh, I, shook, I shook Fabian's hand. But I'm sure they don't – they disliked me a lot. Um, they – I mean, I was pretty heated. I was talking a bunch of shit. I was, I was yelling at him after I knocked him out, and I probably shouldn't have. But uh, whatever, I was emotional. Shit happens. Um, I'm over it. I, I really don't care. Um, he might, you know, have some resentment towards me, and that's fine. I'm going to go in and fight him like I fight anybody else and not be emotional. Um, maybe he feels like he needs to get emotional to <sighs> – make him train more for this fight or, you know, just to have that extra push for this fight. And I mean, it is what it is. Like some people need to get a certain type of mentality to, to get, get ready for fights. And for me, it's just another paycheck, another win and another opponent. Well, same opponent that I beat, but whatever. I just want to go out and showcase my skills. And obviously that fight, the big moment was the knockout, of course. But prior to that, that it's one of the gnarliest cuts we've seen in a while. While you were over there in between rounds, did you know that, oh, man, like I need to push on the gas pedal now because they may stop this fight due to the eye cut? Or is that something that you just weren't even thinking about and you just were like, the cut's the cut. It's going to be there regardless. I still have to fight. Yeah, so me personally, I wasn't thinking too much about it. My forehead was just numb. Yep. And but when I got to the corner, the the my corner men were like, "Dude, your cut's bad." Like, but like, hey, we we need to pick it up. And they were like telling me I need to be urgent. But they weren't saying like, "Oh, this fight, this fight might get stopped." Blah blah blah. But I was like in the back of my head, I'm like, "Dude, I don't know what's gonna happen." So I just gotta press on the gas pedal. I gotta I gotta look for a finish. And you know, I knocked him out. Um, I was. Even, I was thinking about like hitting them, taking them down, and getting a submission or something like that. But in the process of doing that, I, I fucking knocked them out. So you know that was great. With it being a rematch, like how much, how much film are you watching like of that last fight and like things you like things you like that you did, things that maybe you like get a change or adjust to. 
like how much film I guess are you watching in this fight as a rematch as as opposed to like what you say would for a new opponent? I watch about the same amount of film. If anything, I watch more film of myself, like sparring. But from the last fight, I felt like I was doing everything right, actually. The only things that I would change was I would have wrestled a bit more. Like, I was wrestling him, but I wasn't really, like, trying to hold him down. Like, I was getting his back. I was kind of seeing what he was trying to do defensively, and I kind of had a, a feel for it. But I wasn't really going to push on the gas pedal with the wrestling till in the later rounds. But – one big thing that happened was I got cut from getting away from the clinch. Like we were in a clinch on the cage. I, I broke the clinch. I threw some shots and I was staying in range and he threw an elbow while, while I was in the exchange. And that's how I got cut. So that would have been a lot different if I would have wrestled them more, took them down a bit more, held them down more. And then also I'm, I'm understanding like, okay, well, when I'm in the clinch, I got to, land something and get out of range or completely get out of range or try to wrestle them again. So it's like, I can't sit in this middle ground and try to exchange with them in, in the, uh, the clinch. Cause like, you know, it's, it's too risky and you know, I might land something good. He might land something good, but like, like last time, I mean, I landed a few punches, but he landed a, a big elbow and cut me. So um, too risky, uh, not not too big reward. So those are the main two things I think I would do differently based off the footage I've watched of myself uh, fighting him last. And your last fight earlier this year was, I mean, one of the best fights of the year. Sometimes when we're ranking all these fights uh, throughout all the organizations, we forget the early parts of the year. And you mentioned it earlier in the interview and you've mentioned in others as it was a big learning experience and you didn't fight uh, how you quote unquote wanted to fight, but it was still, I mean, I remember watching that. I was like, uh, we've seen you dig deep a lot before, but that was, and also the chin that you showed in that was almost like Impa was throwing bombs and you were just like kind of eating them. I was like, oh my yeah. God. But as you remove yourself from the fight, obviously it's been months. Are you, do you think about it in a certain way? Are you glad that it happened? Um, obviously as fans, we kind of think, oh, if you you don't fight perfectly, you're not as good as people say, but I mean, it's sometimes like you're not 100 percent or sometimes you're you're not in the zone as much as you, you want it to be. And then. But as you remove yourself from that, what is your biggest takeaways from that fight? Or is it just like, hey, I got in a war, I, got, I survived and now it's on to the next one? I think it's a bit of both. I think my game plan going into that fight, I was more so trying to make a statement like, hey, I can I can box with you. And I don't necessarily need to do that. And even if I, even when I was doing that, I was being unintelligent in some of the ways I was incorporating that, 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 uh, you know, that, that I was incorporating my striking. I wasn't moving off enough. I was trying to stand and trade with him a bunch. And in the third round, I did the, I did the same thing. I was walking him down. I was landing, I was hurting him. I took him down. Um, I think, you know, you give me another round or two, I finish them, but you know, whenever you're in the fire, you're, you're, there's always this chance of you getting clipped and, and I allowed that to happen. And you know what, I think it was a good learning experience. Um, it helped after being removed from it and, and watching it back. Um, I made a small mistake and I mean, just like the Fabian Edwards fight before that, I made a small mistake and that's what makes you better is like being able to remove yourself. I won, which is good, but being able to remove yourself from that and, and just look at it and be like, okay, well, I could have done this better. And you know, in the next fight, I'm gonna try to do that. So just being more intelligent with how I fight guys and not trying to always be exciting. Cause I think I want to be exciting sometimes too. And with that Impa fight, I think I was like, all right, I want to score up with this dude. This dude is a decent boxer or a good boxer. And I want to box him and, and, and show him that I can beat him at his own craft. And, you know, and I, I did in the third, but it's like, Johnny, you don't need to do that. Like mm. you can, you can wrestle them. You can do everything, you know, you can, you can uh, be in mid and long range. You don't have to be in inside range and, and constantly boxing with a guy. And uh, yeah, definitely think I could have been more intelligent with how I approached that fight and definitely learn, you know, from watching it back. When you, when he lands that big shot in the first round, are you, is 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 there like second a round, con- second round. Or, sorry, sorry, second round. Yeah. Is there is there like a conscious like is there like a conscious thought in that moment or is it like, like oh shit like you just like 
or is it so like uh, like it's so instinctual and in that you're just like in that like warrior mode? It's just instinctual, bro. Like I get, I got clipped, and I was like, "All right, well, let's slow this guy <laughs> down. Like, let's 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 uh, get in the clinch a little bit." Or you know, I'm throwing back a little bit too. I was throwing elbows. I clipped him too. I, I think on the on um, when we were getting in some of the exchanges. But uh, honestly, it's just instinctual, bro. I don't really think too much when when you get clipped like that. Th- there's two ways you can respond, and it's like, "All right, I'm gonna try to fucking get you back." Or I'm gonna slow you down and get you back, or you're gonna give up. And I, I've been clipped before in other fights, and that's just how I respond. Like, you literally have to put me away or like kill me, you know, to stop me. So, yeah, dude. Like, it's just, oh fuck, I got clipped with something. Why am I here? Okay, well, let's try to work out of it and try, I try to win this fight. That's all I'm thinking, really. You know. And after that fight, you essentially went off the grid right i mean you 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 went in the rv and you kind of traveled all over was that something that was i would assume beneficial but also from a fighting perspective how much were you training or was it just pretty much a hey i just need however many months off and then i'll i know i'm going to be fine once i get back into the groove of things i was training the whole time uh while i was kind of getting off grid like when I was, so I was mainly getting off social media. I still am. Like, I literally bought a second phone. So, like, I'm not, it's not always with me and I'm not always checking it. Um, mainly because um, I need, I still need social media to promote myself and to stay somewhat interactive with fans and stuff like that. I tried to have someone run it for me and it just wasn't, it wasn't how I wanted it to be ran. Not to say they did a bad job, they did a good job, but like, people are DMing me and that's really hard to keep up with and like, Stuff like that. So, and there'd be collaborative posts that I'd have to collab with and I'd have to like remind the person to collab. It's just like, it was like more, it's easier just for me to get on for a few seconds, get things done and then get off of it. So, um, but that whole time I was kind of like off grid. I was basically training. And I remember I went to Vegas, trained with Sean a little bit, um, trained with my boy Naughty Aguilar at Functional Patterns came back, trained a bit at ATT. This whole time I'm like completely off social media, which is really beneficial. I think I have a more healthy relationship with it now um, Mm. that I stepped away for that long. And uh, I did another trip. This was like the longest I didn't train was maybe two and a half, three weeks. Um, I went to Washington state. I drove the van up there, took the dogs, took my fiance. And I did a little bit of like functional patterns training up there like strength conditioning and like uh, working on my mechanics and stuff and hit some pads, but no like live training. Um, but other than that, man, I, I'm always training. I'm always ready. My gas tank's fucking impeccable pretty much all the time. I can always go five rounds, you know? So, but I think it was really good. I think more people need to do uh, stuff like that, like unplug from what everybody else is doing for a bit and kind of just, sit back and look at things how you would have when you were, you know, a kid, you know, like, you remember like when you, like, you know, how that, that term, like, or not that term, that saying like, Hey man, you need to go outside and touch grass. Yeah. 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 It's like, people need to do that. Like for a month straight, you know what I mean? And like really. completely unplug and then come back and revisit like social media and all this shit that we have in our face constantly. Yeah. I shit's not really that beneficial. Deep. Yeah, shit's not that deep. Yeah, exactly. I feel like <laughs> yeah. people get, dude, people get so wrapped up in that stuff. And yeah, like, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It owns them and it's it's saddening. And I mean, to be honest, it was like I would I was like completely I was trying to like push the envelope with like the social media and like I was trying to get more active on it. And I was just like realizing, like, man, this is a lot of work. I'm like, I don't I don't want to do this anymore. So I was like, fuck yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I completely get off. And I feel like I've gotten way more benefit from mm-hmm personally from like getting off that shit than uh completing or completely like dousing myself in in social media i was on how the i know from uh back when you were more active you were posting about but all the like rental properties how are the rental properties doing they're good man i got one florida one in missouri i'm gonna get another one in florida after this fight and then i'm planning on getting another one in missouri 
And then I'm probably going to move and rent this house that I own right now. Cause I, I think I want to move on the, on, onto the water and get a, and nice get a boat. I want to get a boat, but like, I don't want to get a boat and not be on the water. It and doesn't still, make you, you're not going to use the boat. Like you'll still be in, at ATT in Florida. Yeah. I'll still be at ATT. There's uh there's some like, there's some good deals I'm looking at on at Zillow. Um, that are like around my price range. They're not in like the the top spots on the water, but like they're in little areas like uh, Lighthouse Point's a good spot. Deerfield Beach is good. Mm. You can find a good good property on on the intercoastal. You know that's reasonably priced. And uh, yeah, it was between it was between that or getting like two acres of land with like a giant fucking house and like a. Um, a mother-in-law suite and stuff like that. But I think I'm going to hold off and do that when I get a little bit older, because when I do that, I think I want to start like a little farm and stuff like that, but that's mm. way more intensive. Like I have to be there all the time if that's the yeah. case. But I think now that I'm young and I want to, you know, enjoy life a little bit, want to see what boat, boat life is all about. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the van life. That's fun. But boat life mm. seems pretty cool too. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm where I'm at with the rentals and real estate. And before you get out of here, I uh, wanted to ask you, of course, you've I mean, you've been <clears throat> you've been training with Sean for a while now. <clears throat> and I would assume you agree that and we agree too. he won the first fight against DDP. Um, and we <clears throat> everyone on this podcast agrees with that. Of course, it's controversial. But I mean, even Dana said it. Um, and then sec I, I just wanted to honestly ask you about, uh, we've talked about Sean, but DDP style is um, almost <laughs> like as unorthodox as it gets. He, there was, he was interviewing recently. It was like people, will, <laughs> us as fight fans will be like, wow, he did this, that, the other thing. And then it was like, that was so smart. And DDP was like, I've never, like when I'm doing that, I never think like that. Like it's like, <laughs> I just, yeah, he's like I, a, you know, he's like a giant uh, like ogre. Yeah, <laughs> like like you know from the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, like, fucking I don't know what they're uh, what mo like those monsters are called. He's like one of those, bro. Like he's just fucking great cardio, strong, athletic, and just like comes forward and like doesn't care about getting hit. He's like, really durable. Uh huh. And, it's like he's not thinking about shit. He's just fucking throwing and fucking <laughs> trying to submit you and trying to knock you out. And then, like, dude, like that shit, that shit, that shit works. It's hard to like game plan against that. Cause it's like a fucking truck just trying to ram into you. You know what I mean? You know, he's just, he's, I mean, I can't wait for that fight. It's one of my most anticipated fights of the year uh, remaining. Um, if it's this year or whenever. <clears throat> and then also before you get out of here, last question. So for a lot of your come up, Everyone was saying like, oh, at ATT, the guy you got to look out for is Johnny Eblen. And everyone's talking about it, Dustin Poirier, um, the heads of it. Who do you think, or not even, not that you want to put the pressure on this guy, but is there a guy at ATT right now that you're training with and you're saying he's young, he has a lot of potential that we have to keep an eye on? Doesn't matter of the organization. I mean, I'm trying to think right now off the top of my head. I mean, it's like. ATT, obviously, you guys. I mean, you have a, it's as yeah. loaded. I mean, yeah, Bo's here right now, and I mean, he's yeah, he's really good right now. Like he's, he's he, training with him, and he's getting a lot better. Like he's just and those the hands, hands getting better, grappling's great. Like, I mean, but he, everybody knows, like he's going to be a, a problem. So that's not that's why I'm trying to think. Like, okay, who else? I mean, Christian Before Turner. You, he's a young a young guy. He, he hasn't made it to uh, like a Bellator or a PFL or a UFC. He's still fighting on like small regional cards and he's young. He's a young kid, but Christian Turner is a kid to look out for. Um, All right. Grant Dawson, another guy to look yeah. out for. Um, but people know about him, but I think I know, not, yeah, yeah. not as well as he should be like, not as well as he should be. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I mean, obviously <clears throat> it's the fight game. He, He'd be well known even more if he, he just happened to get caught by a really good fighter and his that's, first main event. That's what sucks. It's like yeah, he just got caught. He was on the come up and he was blowing up and then got stopped by Bobby Green and it's just like fuck. 
yeah he like, just Bobby, got caught. Bobby I mean, like blew that smoke out and I'm like damn it dude like <laughs> it's like now people are like second guessing him I'm like dude no it's like that impa fight that I had you know yeah yeah, yeah. Me. It, it is what it is you know and when you're talking about Bo and you're saying that his grappling is getting better was it almost harder for you to improve your grappling than your striking coming off of being such a dominant college wrestler yeah, I think I like I just enveloped myself more into the striking because I was sparring a lot. Mm. So when you're sparring a lot, it's like I was using my wrestling to kind of like win rounds, but it's like, nah, dude, I want to be able to fucking defend myself on the feet. Like, what if I can't take someone down? What if I mm. can't submit somebody? What if I can't do that? Like that's where my head went. And then now that I've like kind of like gotten to a point where my striking is I'm very comfortable like staying on feet with anybody in the world and um now i'm kind of in a place where i'm like okay well maybe i need to venture more into grappling and because i'm getting in some positions in in like grappling scenarios and sparring or even in, in, in like grappling um where i'm like dude i need to be able to finish this like when i'm here or i need to be able to do this this and this and it's like well i need to drill that more but the mm. problem is you only have so much time in the day and yeah. it's like Every fight starts on the feet. I mean, look at Alex Pereira, bro. That dude doesn't know any grappling. <laughs> Barely any. No, he's a black belt. He's, he's a black right? belt. He's a black yeah, belt, Johnny. He ain't a, he ain't a belt, black belt. <laughs> it's he's still, a black it, belt. I'm a black belt. The In the MMA world, the it is still like always the funniest thing when someone lands like a vicious knockout and they just get yeah. like a, a black belt. <laughs> dude, it's It happens funny. all the time. Constantly it happens. It's crazy. <laughs> but... I guess um, just seeing stuff like that, it's just like you, you always have to realize like striking is important. And I, I will say this, like I feel like my style right now is more of like a Marab grappling mm. style, but I want to I wanna transition from that and be able to be more like a Khabib or a mm. Islam mm. Um, to where I'm like able to fucking finish. When I get on top of a guy, I'm going to finish him, you know? Yep. So, but it, I mean, it takes time. It takes like learning and, you know, I'm still getting better and there's still so much to learn and I'm going to evolve. I'm not, I'm not nearly where I want to be. So, I mean, it's just a part of the process. Yes. 100%. All right. Thank you, Johnny. October 19th against Fabian Edwards rematch battle of the giants brace for impact PFLs pay-per-view will be on ESPN plus the zone 4 PM. We will be watching. Uh, it's going to be phenomenal. Best of luck, and we'll definitely talk to you after you get another big-time victory. Thank you, Johnny. Appreciate it, Johnny. See you guys. Bye.